beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today in this video, I want to continue my ongoing series of videos discussing my end game theories for certain characters on Game of Thrones. So far, I have already made videos about Sansa Stark and Arya Stark. So if you have not seen those, I would love it if you would check them out. But today in this video, I want to deviate from the Stark family and talk about Samwell Tarly. Sam is, in my opinion, a character who is underappreciated and people don't really talk about a lot. I really like Sam as a character though, and I think on a show like Game of Thrones, where even some of the most beloved characters do engage in some morally questionable behaviors, I think Sam is the closest thing we have on this show to a character who is just pure good. I mean, I just think Sam is such a precious human being and I really, really like him a lot. So that's why I decided that I wanted to talk about him in this video because I don't see a lot of people make videos about him and I thought, you know, I haven't talked about him a lot up until this point. So I thought it could bring something new and fresh to the table for this video today. Now, some of you out there may be saying, Jackie, Sam has pledged his life to the Night's Watch. So what is there really to theorize about with him? He's going to be in the Night's Watch for the rest of his life because he took the Night's Watch vows. But I don't know if the Night's Watch will continue to exist at the end of the series. I mean, think about it. The purpose of the Night's Watch is to guard the wall and protect Westeros from the Wildlings and the White Walkers. Well, I don't think the Wildlings are going to be an issue anymore because of Jon and his relationship he has built with them. I think perhaps they may receive a castle of their own at the end of the show, possibly the Dreadfort, or somehow be allowed to live out their lives in peace and coexist peacefully with Westeros. And once the Night King is destroyed, which I am very confident he will be, there will be no more White Walkers to protect Westeros from. So what is the point of the Night's Watch continuing to exist at the end of the series. I think at the end of the show, Jon will tell all members of the Night's Watch who agreed to fight beside them in the Great War that they have now been freed from their vows and they have paid for their crimes, those of them who did commit crimes in the past, and they can now all reintegrate into society. And when you think about it, we saw that a lot of people who were forced to join the Night's Watch really weren't guilty of very bad crimes and were really just unfortunate because they had a bad start in life and they were peasants, they were poor, and they were taken advantage of. So I think it would really make sense for John to give all of these men who have served faithfully in the Watch a second chance, Sam included. Even if for some reason the Night's Watch wasn't disbanded, I'm not entirely sure that Sam's vows are valid because he was forced to join the Watch by his father, Randall Tarly, aka the worst dad in all of Westeros, uh, possibly second to Stannis because Stannis, you know, did burn his daughter alive, which is pretty bad to say the least. My point here is that Randall Tarly hated Sam for really no good reason, just because Sam didn't match up to Randall's idea of masculinity. So he told Sam that if he did not join the Night's Watch, then he was going to go out on a hunting trip with his father and die in an accident. So Sam only joined the Night's Watch because he was told it was either that or death. And I am not entirely convinced that vows taken under the threat of death can be considered valid because the person was not doing it of their own free will. We know in Westeros that if you force a woman to say her wedding vows under threat of death, then the marriage is not valid. So possibly the same could be said with the Night's Watch, though then again, the whole concept of a Night's Watch is that you're choosing that or death. So I guess maybe not, but that also could be something that, you know, John, when he becomes king, doesn't want to do anymore. So I guess we're kind of back to where we originally started. So I don't know what the point of me going on this tangent was, but it's fine. It's totally fine. We're gonna get back on track now. Anyways, my whole point with that thing was I don't think Sam is going to continue to be a member of the Night's Watch. I am pretty convinced the Night's Watch will no longer exist, at least not in the same form that it used to. So the question is, what is Sam going to do with his life then? Well, I think the most popular thing I see people say is they think Sam is going to become a maester, his childhood dream, and possibly someday serve as grand maester to John when John inevitably becomes king. 
Now, I sort of understand where people are coming from when they say this, because like I said, this was what Sam wanted to do when he was a child. And you know, Sam loves reading and learning, so it could be a good fit for him. But we saw Sam spend some time training at the Citadel in season seven, and he was absolutely miserable. So I don't know if he would choose to go back there. Another thing that gives me pause is that members of the Citadel cannot get married, and I really think that Sam has to start a life with Gilly and little Sam. I think Sam and Gilly are just the most precious and most pure relationship on all of Game of Thrones, and I am like 99.99999% confident that Sam, Gilly, and little Sam are all going to survive the end of the series. I mean, if the show was to kill any of them off, it would just feel so unnecessarily sad and just pointless. So I honestly think that Sam has to have a life with Gilly at the end of the show. I think he loves her and we know that he loves little Sam as little Sam is his biological son and Gilly considers Sam to be little Sam's father. So I think his future has to include them in it. And if he's a maester, then they can't be together. So then perhaps Sam could inherit Horn Hill, his family's castle, which he was unjustly denied when his father sent him to join the Watch. We know that Sam's father and his younger brother, Dickon, which is still possibly the funniest name in all of Game of Thrones. But anyway, both of them are dead now, which means that there is no male heir to Horn Hill except for Sam. So it's possible that he could get the castle that he was unjustly denied. However, I have another theory, and this is where High Garden comes in. Now, when Cersei blew up the Sept of Baelor, she killed Marjorie Tyrell, Loras Tyrell, their father Mace, and then Elena Tyrell ended up dying as well, which means the entire House Tyrell that we know on the show is deceased, and there is currently no Lord of High Garden. And now, Marjorie and Loras do have two other brothers in the books, Willis and Garland. However, I'm inclined to say that if the entire House Tyrell was wiped out in the show, the same thing is probably going to happen in the books because I'm just not sure they would kill an entire family and leave this High Garden succession up in the air if they weren't going to do something with it in both the books and the show. Maybe I'm giving the show too much faith here because I know they're never going to address the Doran succession after they killed all of the Martells and Sand Snakes they actually bothered to include on the show. But I'm just trying to have a little faith here that Game of Thrones is going to do something with this High Garden issue, and I have a reason that I think that. Now, all the way back in April, the website Watchers on the Wall revealed that this, the castle that was used for High Garden is going to be seen again in season eight. However, they are not going back to Spain to film new footage at this castle. They are using old footage they already had. So some people came up with crazy theories like, oh, maybe Elena Tyrell is not dead and it's going to be some big reveal we see via flashback. I don't think that's the case. I think they are probably just going to use aerial or outside footage of this castle as an establishing shot, meaning that we will see Highgarden again in season eight. So with the entire Tyrell family dead because of Cersei, this means there needs to be a new Lord of Highgarden and Warden of the South. So John, who I think is going to be king, is going to have to look for someone to raise up to that position. Now, House Charlie were sworn to House Tyrell because they also rule in the Reach, and they had many, many years of loyal and faithful service to House Tyrell, being one of their principal bannermen. And Sam has been John's most loyal and trusted friend since they met each other in the Night's Watch. And because of these two things, I think this makes Sam being John's best friend and a member of a great house in the Reach could be raised to Lord of Highgarden and Warden of the South. And then he could marry Gilly and raise little Sam as his own child. And they could have more kids together because I think Sam and Gilly are just the kind of people who are going to get married 
married and have a long happy life together would want a whole bunch of babies no just be so cute and precious now the last thing i want to address before i wrap up this video is a very very popular theory so i am not at all claiming that this theory is original to me i have seen it so 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 many times i don't even know who's the original creator of this theory because i've seen it on basically every single game of thrones theory channel and i'm just gonna repeat it here in case you somehow haven't heard it by now and this is the theory that sam is the narrator of the entire Game of Thrones story. When you think about it, this really makes sense. I mean, Sam loves books and learning and stories, and we see him reading a lot. So it would make sense if at the end of the show, we find out that this is all a story that he is recounting to maybe little Sam or his grandkids or possibly even John's kids. In my opinion, the most convincing piece of evidence for the Sam is the narrator theory is this scene from season seven, where Sam is talking to Archmaester Ebros. Useful. Shavathan was a dreadful writer, but an excellent researcher. Archmaester, I wonder if this one. Mr. Fall was quite the opposite, a brilliant stylist who invented half the stories he tells. Um, I wanted to ask if you're you... You're going to write histories, Tali. You have to do the research. If you want people to read your histories, you need a bit of style. I'm not writing a chronicle of the wars following the death of King Robert I, so it can sit on a shelf unread. What? You don't like the title? What would you call it, then? Possibly something a bit more poetic? In this clip, the Archmaester says that he is working on a book chronicling the history of the war since the death of King Robert I, which basically could sum up the entire plot of Game of Thrones from season one onward. And Sam says that he thinks the title needs to be more poetic. And what is a more poetic title other than A Song of Ice and Fire, which is the name of the book series on which Game of Thrones is based? Some people actually think that the final scene of the show may feature author George R.R. R. Martin playing an older version of Sam. In fact, George actually has said that Sam is the character in the series that reminds him the most of himself. I would probably be Samwell Tarly. I love Sam, too. He's a great character. Tyrion might be who I want to be, but Sam is probably closer to who I actually am. The fat kid who likes to read books and doesn't like to go up a lot of stairs. The only problem I would have with this if this was the end of the show is it can possibly raise the question about how much of our story has actually been true. Think about it. If Sam has been writing down this history, he has a clear bias. He is best friends with John. The World of Ice and Fire book which George R. R. Martin published is actually written as if it was written by a maester who has a clear bias towards the Lannisters. So if the end of the show is Sam reading out of this book, that raises the question of was everything that he's told us in these past eight seasons actually true? Or did he change the story to make John and John's family look better? Also, if the show ended with the with the reveal that the entire show was just some story that Sam made up and it's not even true, I would, I don't know what I would do. It would ruin the show for me. I mean, that would basically be the equivalent to saying it was all a dream and that would just really invalidate the story for me. So I hope that that is not the case. Or if the show ended, like some people have been saying, with Bran waking up after getting pushed out of that tower and we find out the entire show since episode one has been a dream while he was unconscious, then I would probably never ever watch a show again and I would be pissed for the rest of my life. No hyperbole. Anyway, guys, those are my endgame theories about Samwell Tarly. Let me know what you think about these theories. Do you think that Sam will become Lord of Highgarden? Do you think Sam will become a maester? Do you think the Night's Watch will continue to exist? Do you will buy the Sam is the narrator theory? Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more Game of Thrones theories. If there is a certain character or topic you would like me to address in a future video, please leave it in the comments comments and I will do my best to answer it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye! See you next time!